Hello and welcome to Bernina Creative Studio. Today we're doing something very simple, very practical. We are making a fusible quilt label. So you won't have to stitch it on by hand afterwards. So it's very simple. We'll use the Bernina 590 and the built-in lettering to compose the label. We will add a little decoration and then with the proper layers, we will fuse it to the back of a project. It's now time to hoop our fabric. So I'm going to set aside my fusible layer because that comes last in the project. What I have is my fabric and my stabilizer. And what I will do is use my spray box to put the temporary spray adhesive on the stabilizer. And what I do is I spray a little bit of it in the box. That way it will hold my stabilizer for me when I'm ready to spray. And when you spray stabilizer, as the can says, you want to do about a foot away and you do a back and forth motion and that's enough. Never spritz because that will leave sticky globs on your stabilizer. This is now ready to use. In the industry, the embroidery industry, they call this a backing. And the reason is that you apply it to the back of your fabric. This way you can smooth it out even with a gliding motion and it does not stretch your fabric. You never want to do this from the front. It would stretch your fabric and leave marks. So that is ready to hoop. I am lucky today. I'm using the Bernina MIDI hoop. It has the ergonomic twist lock mechanism here. So no screws to work on. Very easy. When I open it, I will place the inner ring on my fabric. Now, most people try to get that into the outer ring. My brain works in reverse. I am going to grab the stabilizer here, which means good and taut, and I will hold on to it here. And I will let this ring, which is now fully open, I will let this outer ring wrap itself around this one. So my focus stays here. Once I'm hoop, nothing has moved here. This one will accommodate. So I go to the hoop and there, the top of the hoop will not flex open. So I will go in there first. As the bulk builds up, the bottom right opens up and accommodates it. And then all I have to do is turn the knob until I hear one click. Five clicks does not do any more. And at this point, I am ready to do the usual little peekaboo, just about a sixteenth or thirty second of an inch. I make the bottom layer peek out from the edge and I am ready to go at the machine. We are now ready to begin. First thing I'm going to do is set up my machine so that it makes my work easier. I will go to uh, select my hoop. I will be working with a MIDI hoop. So that will help me visualize everything. And when that is done, I will also activate the grid. And in the settings, I am going to go and select my embroidery units to metric millimeters. Because if you do small fractions on screen, you end up with long decimals with inches. With millimeters, it will be 12, 15, or something like that. Nice round numbers. So that is being done. I'm ready to add the lettering. First thing we'll do is load the file that is provided. That is a straight stitch line that will define the shape and size of the label. So I have it on my USB stick and I will just add a layer and go to the USB stick and it is the rectangle of stitching and that will show up on my screen. That will be my guideline for laying out my label. Now with that being done, I can now add the lettering. So with the plus layer on the machine, I can now uh, go to the machine side and with the alphabets folder, I picked in this case the Swiss block, the first alphabet. It has a nice crisp style, makes the label legible from a distance if need be. So I will now add five, five lines of lettering and just locate them on the screen. The grid will help me space them out. So the first line in my case is made. So I start with a, a capital M, then I switch to lowercase made with, and I will pick my letters. And the lettering will be generated on screen at a default size. The machine does not know yet what I want. In this case, I reduce the size to 66%. So I go to the I functions, I go to the sizing control, and then I will bring it down to 66%. And you'll see that that will take less space on the screen. And at this point, I can move it up 
towards the top of the screen. So going back through the breadcrumbs, I can go to the moving tool and then move it up. And it will be about one grid square below the top of the label. Now with the screen being at normal resolution, this is a bit hard to see. I can zoom in and then with the panning tool move towards the top, I can see my rectangle and I can move this up until it is about one grid line shy of the top of the hoop. At this point, I can zoom back out so I have a good bird's eye view. I can add another layer. The alphabet is already pre-positioned on screen, so all I have to do is select it again. And this will be the word love, all in uppercase, because love is important. And when that is created, it will again land in the center of the screen, which is great. I always know where to look for the new item. This one will stay as is, so I'm just going to move it up using the same sizing, same motion control. And this one will be about two grid lines below the previous one. And I can eyeball this on the screen, or if I want precision, I could zoom in. Now, when I first make a label like this, I just put everything on screen and then I go back and fine tune it. So I know now what to do because I've already done this as a practice. So I go back and I will now add a third layer, which is the word for. And so the alphabet is ready to select. It's already in uppercase, so first letter goes in, switch to lowercase, and type the other two letters. And that is my word. And that will be right in the center of the hoop, but the size will be down again to 66%. So as you can see already, the word love will stand out compared to the others. I can add one more layer for the next to last and that was the name of my son. The, this is basically the quilt label I did for the first quilt I made for him. So I put his name in uppercase. There you go. That stays at 100% size. And again, I can move this down by using the move control. And that will be about two grid squares below the word four. And I'm ready for the last layer which will be same alphabet. And that is my initials. You could put your name there. My initials with a space and then the year uh, it was made. So I will put 2019 and there is the last line of text. This will be at 66%. So I will size it first because I wanted the same ratio as the rest of the lettering other than the two big words because that will, when I'm working on the layout, that helps me figure out where I want it by sizing it first. If I move it first and size it second, I may have to move it again because the dimensions will have changed. So that's about one grid line shy of the bottom of the rectangle. My lettering is all there. So now I can fine tune by zooming in and placing everything in place. I have new my guidelines for now, so it's already there. So you can see I have uh, made with love for Daniel with my name. Love and Daniel are the two keywords. They are larger. Next, we will uh, actually add the decorations to it. To add the decoration design to my label, I will close the I functions and I will now go to the plus layer and go back to the USB stick at the top of the screen. And then the design is there. It is from the collection called Make Stitch Sew by Crabapple Hill. It's a little heart. And it is, it, to me, reminiscent of red work. So I will actually stitch it in red only when I'm ready. So it will land in the middle, which is good because that's pretty much the orientation, the location I want. I just need to move it to the left. So going back to the eye functions, to the move tool, I will use the upper knob, which moves side to side, and I will move it to the side. This is really to taste. I will also rotate it. So with the breadcrumbs, go back to the eye functions, select the rotation tool, and I will rotate to the left counterclockwise about 30 degrees. And that will give me, that will make the point of the heart straight sided, so it will flank the word four, and I will do the same thing on the other side, so we'll have two hearts flanking the middle and kind of drawing the eye to the center of the label. When that is done, all I have to do now is duplicate this heart, so go back through the breadcrumbs, through the eye functions, and use the duplicate tool, 
and uh, that needs to be mirror image sideways. The tool is right in front of me. I will mirror image sideways. And at this point, I need to move it up and to the right. And they're both about a grid line and a half away from the word four. So I will bring it down, now I bring it up rather, and I will zoom in so I can see a little better. And now I can position it by moving it. And when you zoom in, you can alternate between panning, which is moving your viewfinder, and the other tool is for actually moving the embroidery. So it's very quick to go back and forth. You can pan to see the area you need to work on, and then go to the Move tool, select the object you need to move, and just move it. They do not need, the two hearts do not need to be exactly the same level. You can go freeform. It will actually give interest to your design. That is it. I have now composed the label motif. The, the whole design is done. So now that I have all the components of my label, I need to do two things. One is consolidate. I want my hearts to be together. I want all my lettering to be together. And then after that, I will end up with three layers, and I will rearrange them in the proper sequence. So let's start with that. I will go to layer seven, because right now I have eight layers based on the composition that I just made. And layer seven and eight are the two hearts. Now, when you group things together, think of it as the bottom layer is the tray. The, what's on top of it is what the goodies. And when you group, the goodies will be glued to their tray. So always select the layer below to group with the layer above. So I select layer seven. I go through my uh, eye functions and I go to the group tool. And in the group tool, the group plus will group the items together. When I touch that, layers seven and eight are now combined into a single layer number seven. I will now go down to the bottom layer of the text, which is layer two, which is the first line that I introduced right above the rectangular stitching. And now I can group again. I will do this four times because I have five layers. So after one, two, three, and four times, all my lettering is grouped into a single layer. It is now layer two because it, lettering was introduced before the hearts. So now that everything is consolidated, I can optimize the sequence. And I need to change only one thing. My rectangular stitching that I use as a guideline now needs to move to the end of the sequence because that will apply the fusible layer to finish up the label construction. So it needs to go last. I will select that layer, which is layer number one. I will go through my breadcrumbs, through the I functions, and I will go to the sequence tool. And then I will move it up until it becomes layer three. When that is done, I am ready to stitch out that design. To stitch the design out, I need to leave the I functions that I had open, and I will go to the stitch out screen, which is the needle on my screen. Now, the machine will tell me to make sure there is no hoop connected. It tells me to lift the hoop off the machine, because at this point, since I just turned it on before starting to work, it wants to initialize the module and find its zero position. When that is done, I can go back to the needle, and now it will ask to, for me to put the hoop on the machine. And when I say OK, it will verify that this is the hoop, uh, what hoop is on the machine, and it will go to the startup stitch. I will now thread the machine, and for the lettering, I use uh, charcoal colored thread. I prefer this to pure black, because it softens up a little bit the look of the label, and it blends in a little bit. It's really a matter of preference. So I am going to thread the machine, and when that is done, I'll be ready to stitch it out. Okay, now the machine will stitch the lettering first, which is in charcoal, and if it stops between the lines of lettering, you can just restart and continue. When it comes to the hearts, I will switch to the color red, and I will sew all the colors, I believe there's four colors in the hearts, I will sew all of them with the red color, so it will look like red work when I'm done. And then I will stop before the last color, which is the rectangular stitches. So I will let the machine stitch out, 
Now that my embroidery is done, I have the lettering and the hearts stitched out. There's one color left to go. That's the straight line of stitching that will actually form up the label, put the layers together. So I will put the hoop back on the machine, and I will be using my piece of fusible interfacing. This is mid-weight fusible interfacing. Mid-weight because it will behave with the weight of the label, it will work well with it. And the fusible side is really the right side for me because it needs to be on the outside of the label. So I will put the little dots against the label itself because once this is all turned right side out, they will now be on the outside. I will use the OESD embroidery tape to hold this at the top and at the bottom. That way it will stay put. You could do it without, but it's a little bit of insurance that you don't have to worry very near the end, the stitch out will proceed normally. And I will be using, uh, you could use sewing thread. I'm using isocord. It works just as well for that last seam. I will be using this to stitch out the label together. That way there will not be a high contrast thread near the edge of my label. This will blend in with the materials used to make the label. So when I have the machine rethreaded, I will stitch that line out. It takes only about 30 seconds. It's just a little line of stitching. Now that my machine is threaded with the last color, I can just let it go. Now that everything is stitched out, it's time to take the project out of the hoop. And with a twist lock mechanism, it has these release buttons. All I have to do is press them, and the hoop comes apart without any effort and my project is out. So what I will do at this point is trim this off. I will remove the excess stabilizer first and I will keep the stabilizer inside the label. I found that it gave the label body and it lied flat and it gave a nice uh, consistency if you want to the project. So I will tear and we call it tear away. In, for my little brain, I think of it as tear along. That way I do not stress my project, especially on lightweight fabrics. And I can just go and zip this off by following the edge. And from the top, I will now use my OESD duckbill scissors that are generally for applique, but I tend to use mine most in embroidery. And I will cut very close to the stitching. And being that they are duckbill scissors, they will guarantee me a very, very thin margin left on the fusible interfacing. And what I will do is use the eighth of an inch mark on my ruler and line that mark with my stitch line on the side. And since the stitch line is perfectly straight because the sewing machine, the embroidery machine made it, I do not have to worry about that line wavering on me. So with only an eighth of an inch seam allowance, I do not have to worry about bulk in the seam when I turn this right side out. Next is the corners. I use one of the lines on my ruler to find the 45 degree angle, and then I will leave a good sixteenth of an inch, a little, uh, let's say a fat sixteenth of an inch on the corner. If you cut too close, when you turn the corner, you might rip the corner out if you push too hard on the point turner. So that gives me a little insurance policy. And when that is done, there's one last bit of cutting to do which is with the scissors, is to slit the fusible interfacing lengthwise. I will leave about an inch at both ends so that all the way around the edge of the label there will be an undisturbed interfacing to get me a good fusing and a good framing of my label. So I need to pinch just that layer of interfacing. And it's like turning a pocket. You need to separate the layers and slit in the direction of the final cut, and then I will continue my slit. It does not need to be perfectly straight. This slit will be underneath the label. It will close itself up. Voila. And at this point, I am ready to turn this inside out. Voila, it's turned in right side out. I will do a very basic rolling of my seam. And at this point, my point turner is the tool of choice. I like the bamboo style because it is softer on the seam. I have a plastic one, but you have to be careful. It's pointier and it, you can poke through a seam more easily. 
So using the blunt end, which is slightly rounded, I will, with the project down on the mat, I will coax that seam all the way around. And as you can tell, this will not coax the corners. When I am done going around, I will go back to the corners. That will reduce the stress, the, the amount of pushing I need to do. And when you push your corners, always do it in tiny little increments until you get there. Do not try to put the corner out at once. This took about four pokes and I got a perfect corner. If you go too fast, you can poke right through that corner. That little stitch could yield and pop out. So I will just do my corners. When you're done, you have a label. It is not pressed yet. You cannot press this at this point. If you put the, this on the ironing board and press, you will be fusing this to your ironing board. So we will just keep it that way. Now that I have my label all done, constructed, and turned right side out, I will position it on the project, and I will fuse in two stages. I have my iron on wool setting. The fusible interfacing calls for between wool and cotton uh, with a pressing cloth. Uh, I will do it with steam and I will do it on the, on the wool setting. I'd rather have a slightly cooler iron and hold the pressing a little longer than risk scorching. Do not ask me how I know that. <laughs> so with, uh, with steam coming out, I will now start pressing from the center out. And this is a quick fuse. It's basically Think of it as fuse basting. And I will go towards the corners, and that will press out. Normally, we don't iron when we press, but remember, this is just a quick, think rolling pie dough. You go from the center out to the corners. Now that it's in place and relatively smooth, I am ready for the pressing cloth. And then you follow the fusing instructions that come on the sleeve for the fusible interfacing. So I can now go and give it steam and wait the 10 seconds. They recommend 10 to 15 seconds. If this is going to be washed, I would say give it the 15 seconds. And don't worry about matting down the batting on a, let's say, a baby quilt or something like that, because you can go back and kind of just scrunch the quilt, and that will loosen up your batting again. Now, when the fusing is done, I will let this cool so that when I handle the project, whether I pick up the quilt or whatever the label went on, I will not be peeling it off while the fusible material is still soft. So here you have it. You have a self-fused label that you can put on the back of a quilt or any project, really. And you'll notice that it's, it's actually on there. Now, you could go back if the project lands itself, and you could stitch around the edge if you wanted to. You could hand stitch around the edge as well if you wanted to. The advantage of this, by using a perfectly rectangular stitch line at the beginning, is that we have the perfect shape. We don't have to worry about turning things manually and getting uneven results. And it will, it's easy to put on, and it will stay on. Thank you for joining us on Bernina Creative Studio. We hope you enjoyed this project and look forward to presenting you more material soon.